Hello and welcome back to Kim Reads as we continue with The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Chapter 12, The Man in the Black Cape. The Rose and Crown was a very busy place. Claude Frollo placed for hours waiting for Jeanne and Phoebus to leave. When he finally saw his brother and the captain emerge, he followed them down the road. Do you have any money left, Jeanne? Phoebus asked. Jeanne didn't answer. Instead, he started singing. There's nothing left in my pouch, Jayon said finally, which is my cue to go home. Jayon tipped his hat to Phoebus and made his way down the street. Phoebus stopped in front of a statue to catch his breath. When he heard steps behind him, he spun around. Who's there? Phoebus called out. You've nothing to rob from me. Captain Phoebus, Claude Frollo shouted from under the black cave he was wearing. How do you know my name? Phoebus asked. Not only do I know your name, but I know where you are going as well. Y you do not. Show your face. Let's fight it out. Beavis put his fists in the air. You are planning to meet the gypsy girl. How do you know that? Beavis swung at the strange man but didn't him. You will not go to her. If you do, I will surely hurt you, for you do not deserve her. What are you talking about, you crazy old man? I'm going to meet the girl whether you like it or not. Phoebus said angrily as he drew his sword. I will fight you right here and now if you don't let me pass. There's no need for swords, Claude Frollo said. I know you have no money. I am coming with you and I will pay you to let me speak with her. What? Phoebus began. Wait, you'll pay me? Very well, you can come along. But this is all very strange. Phoebus led them to a small dinghy inn run by an old hag. The walls were cracked and falling apart. You go first, Phoebe said, and hide. I'll be back with the girl soon. You can talk to her for a moment, but that's it. After that, you'll have to leave. Claude Frollo stepped back into the room and took off his hood. He waited as his eyes adjusted to the darkness. Finally, he heard the stairs creak. Seeing a light under a doorway, he quickly hid inside the closet. The old woman led Phoebus and Esmeralda into a room. At first... Claude Frollo could hardly believe she was there. She was so beautiful, he almost fainted from the sight of her. Even though it was wrong, he had never loved anything. Not his brother, not his brooks, not the church, the way he loved Esmeralda. Esmeralda was upset. She did not like Phoebus alone in an inn. But he told her again and again that he loved her. I, I do not think I should come here, Esmeralda said to him. I am breaking a promise, and I will never find my parents now. My charm will lose its power. I promised my gypsy family when they gave me a pouch that I would be good. And being alone here with you is not good. I wish I understood what you were talking about, Phoebe said. Esmeralda stood there quietly with Jolly her feet. I do love you, Captain Phoebe. You do? He said and put an arm around her waist. You were kind and saved me from the man in the black cape last night. She moved away from his arm. I can never thank you enough. He stepped closer to her, but Esmeralda moved again. Every time Phoebus took a step closer to her, she moved away. Do you love me? she asked. He sank to one knee. As I have never loved another. I am so happy I can die, Esmeralda said. Why should you want to die? You are beautiful. Phoebus stepped in closer and tried to give her a kiss. But Esmeralda ducked and stood next to the window. She had vowed never to kiss a man until she was either married or reunited with her parents. If you love me as you say you do, then we can be married. Today's marriage. We can be happy here, together, forever. I'm yours and you're mine. We don't need a church and a ceremony to tell us that. What use is marriage to two people who love each other as we do? Phoebe stepped forward again and very close to Esmeralda. The entire scene made Claude Frollo's veins run cold. The silly captain was trying to take advantage of Esmeralda, trying to make her believe he loved her so he could kiss her, but Claude Frollo knew he did not truly love her. She was so good, so honest, and the captain's intentions were anything but good. That rascal, Claude Frollo thought, the weasel, oh, I'll teach him. Phoebus grabbed Esmeralda's shawl and pulled it off her shoulders. He could clearly see the pouch around her neck. What is that? He asked. I saw it yesterday when you were at the apartment. 
Please, Captain Phoebus, it is my charm. It will help me find my parents. Please give me back my shawl. You do not love me, Phoebus pouted. But I do, I do. Even if we can't be married, I want you to be with me all the time. I don't need anything but air and love. Oh, what does it matter anymore? Maybe I'll never find my parents anyway. They've stayed away from me for this long. Esmeralda stepped toward him, prepared to kiss him, and Claude crashed through the closet door. Before Esmeralda knew what was happening, she fainted. And that's the end of chapter 12. I will see you next time.